Hello everyone, welcome to another exciting Minecraft tutorial. I am Tyken, and today I'll be showing you my automatic reed farm, which is not only functional, but looks pretty good if I must say so myself. Uh, anyway, over here, let's go ahead and show you the basics. Um, I made two of these, which are the growers and collectors. Uh, it's really basic, and you can stack it all the way up to the sky limit, or go all the way down. It's pretty much limitless, it's really easy to build. Um, I'll show you more details on how it works later, but for right now I'm just going to show it off. Um, right here you have the water which the reed needs to grow. Here are the signs keeping the water from falling down, but I mostly did this so you could see the reeds being harvested. Uh, you could actually just have one big waterfall pouring all the way down and not really have any complications. Uh, anyway, well let me go ahead and show you how it works and then I'll explain it more. Over here is the collection button. Press the button and as you can see, um, pistons up there push the reed into the water and it has about 90 percent success rate meaning that only once in a while you get like one maybe two reeds that don't fall down all the way um, if you do it if you let it grow too high um, all the way to three then sometimes you'll get you'll get uh, a lot of reed that don't gather properly so uh, this is better for space and efficiency but uh, anyway Basically what I did over here is I took the same design and duplicated it on this side. The way the wiring works, it, it's pretty much really easy to do. Um, let me go ahead and show you some of the wiring. Uh, these are the pistons. Uh, from the... well, I'll go ahead and show you how the wiring works exactly. Here's the button. It comes down here, activates this redstone torch, which deactivates this one, which um, pretty much continues the same thing all the way down. Uh, hold on, let me uh, go ahead and block this back. It goes all the way down. Let me go ahead and get a shovel so I can dig out and show you. It, and I just hit that redstone. Crap. Basically, it keeps going all the way down here, hits the repeater, and then hits this torch which which um, activates and turns it on from the bottom so let me go ahead and get back up here if I can figure out how there we go and just cover all this back up now once it's activated from here thanked, thanks to Notch and all the other people on the development team uh, Redstone now directly connects to the repeaters so you can make this much thinner otherwise it would be at least two squares bigger just to have the same basic setup anyway coming through here it activates all of these uh, you can actually make this building longer up to fifteen before you start getting complications uh... meaning you know the redstone current runs out at the fifteenth uh, block although i would say fourteen or thirteen to be safe uh, this current building is 11 by 11, um, which kind of already close to its, its max. But let me go ahead and show you how it works down here. Uh, what happens is the, the water, the reed, fall down through here, and you have to have these signs at the bottom. Uh, they all drop into this uh, conveyor belt of water. It pushes it down to another conveyor belt and continues down from there. Basically a series of conveyor belts uh, going through all that. I'll probably show you how that works later. Anyway, uh, over here, the redstone current hits this uh, torch, which sends the signal up. Turning this one on sends the signal through here. And again, it kind of continues up with the torches. And this last one is just on the side, since uh, it needs to connect. And it turns this the last top row on. You can pretty much continue that same process all the way up. Up here, I uh, made this mostly for show, where uh, kind of a design where you can make it look beautiful and functional or just look cool I guess uh, I apparently forgot to put glass right there but regardless you have a nice little balcony right here which is actually the redstone circuitry tower going up that sends a signal up I uh, reformed it to make it look kinda like a balcony and in here you can make it a bedroom or a watchtower whatever you want it to look like plus it already looks pretty awesome because you have windows for the reeds and everything although you don't actually need to put the glass there at all I just put it there so you can actually see the inner workings of how it actually works the signs you can just put whatever make it look like an actual house or whatever and that's pretty much it for this now let me show you some of the advanced things now that we've harvested the reed you're like well where do you pick it up 
right here, actually. I developed an item elevator. Let's see if it decides to work this time. It essentially pushes all the items all the way up and directly to you. It's a really, really interesting design. It took a very long time to actually perfect. And even then, sometimes it doesn't always work. It does work. It's just that there's a strange glitch that sometimes the items get stuck under the top of the piston, so it doesn't get pushed up. But it does work. The timing works perfectly. I've even put a solid block, and it pushed it all the way up here perfectly fine. Um, let me go ahead and show you an example of how this one works. Uh, I made a top model. Uh, again, it's pretty much the same. Uh, the conveyors drop it off into the water system, which I made a short one here. The water pushes it onto a... Uh, crap, I just collected them. A bottom piston right here. It's under the water, so you can't see. So let me uh, block this off. Or, wrong location. There's a piston under the water. The water pushes it directly over the piston, so you don't ever get uh, any uh, complications with that. Because before, uh, if you put it just at the edge of the piston, sometimes it won't push it up. So this just kind of uh, fixes it and makes it work better. Uh, the original design I had for this was much, much more bulky, and it didn't always work. So I developed a new system to make it work and alternate perfectly fine. Let's go ahead and show you how it works. You just come over here and flip the switch, and you can see it actually going up. This design always works perfectly. It's really cool. You can actually see it work with a solid block as well, which is interesting because you can use this particular design for a number of awesome things. This was actually a last minute idea that I implemented right before I did this video. Um, I finished my reed farm like a day or two ago, and then I spent another entire day trying to get this thing to work. It's really advanced, and it actually surprised it works, but it's, like I said, it's kind of uh, innervating, because imagine uh, with the expanded farming coming in the next patch, we'll have um, wheat farms, cactus farms, and reed farms. That's three farms already, not to mention all the other farms that may be coming. Uh, imagine having all of your automatic farms together in a general location. Imagine having them all uh, conveyed to a single location where they all kind of meet up. Um, I'm also thinking maybe uh, control switches where you can decide which ones actually drop into the collection zone and which ones drop to a disposal zone. So you can, uh, like, say you have too many cactus and you don't want any more, you can just choose to have it drop in fire or something, destroy them, um, while the other ones drop into a generalized location, and then you can use your elevator to bring it up directly into your base or into a convenient location where you don't have to go underground to collect it. And that's pretty much my idea behind all this, and I believe it came out nicely. I'll be showing you um, how to make this in a moment. I'll also be showing you, um, I'll, I'll be putting the save file in the description below so you can actually look at it and see how it's built and how it works for yourself as well as play with it. Um, but first, let's go ahead and go with the basic reed farm design. I'm only going to build a single tier. That way you know how it works, and then you can just uh, continue building up from there. Um, let me go ahead and get my supplies. There we go. This should be, should be good for now. I generally do 8 wide, at least I did for this one, I think. Uh, you can make it bigger or smaller, depending on what you what you need. Again, uh, you don't want to make it too big, because I made that mistake. Uh, I made a duplicate one that was much bigger, see how big I could make it. And I had, prob I had lots of problems with the uh, conveyor belts being too small, and the... Uh, well, just a general lot of problems, mostly the redstone circuitry. You could always make it a little bit wider, and it would be easier to solve the redstone problem. But again, that's if you want it. If you want it bigger, you can always make it bigger. But let's go ahead and uh, finish this. Uh, we already put the water. Now we just need to put the reeds. Which where are the reeds? I can never find these. Up oh, there they are. Right before. I... Okay. It's pretty much the same as making any other reed farm. You have 
water right next to it. And then here's the big part. You're going to want to have uh, dirt coming up here. Uh, actually, I think I synced this in one level so the pistons are exactly ground level. But um, I'm just showing you uh, general design here. Then what you do is after you're done with that, you uh, grab your pistons. Which again, this thing is great, but I always forget where items are. Line them up perfectly fine like this. Then say you have your switch here. Uh, actually, no, no, no. I'm going to need to put another platform right here for the redstone. Okay. For switch, for repeater, just so we can uh, extend the current. And uh, here we go. Now we just line the entire row with redstone, and then just put repeaters all along here. And there you go. Then what I generally like to do is, since you don't want it to be, um, you don't want it to grow to the third height, uh, you put a, a layer of dirt right above it, which is actually perfect because that's where you plant your next row of reed. Um, that's if you want to tier it, like make it taller. Uh, I was also thinking possibly making a, a wider design where you can uh, make more efficient uh, room design, I guess, have more, like have one on this side as well. I'm not sure how well that would look. I mean, this one looks really cool, especially because you can see the side of it. But um, again, the pistons might also push the reed onto the other side, which would be a problem as well, considering you would have wasted product. Um, this, this automatic reed farm is much more different. It's not as effective as other automatic uh, wheat farms, which are the other automatic wheat farm design is much similar to the, the wheat farm design where you basically just have water flow over it. Of course it's a little bit more trickier than that considering you have to cut off its water flow that waters it or it won't pop off. This one however is fully automatic meaning you do not have to replant any reed at all. All you have to do is click a button whenever it's fully grown and bam! You don't have to replant anything, you don't have to take any additional time, all you have to do is collect. Which is the one reason I like this design over the other one. Again, you may not get as much reed per harvest, but at the same time, you don't have to do as much work. So you could just build a couple of these, or even copy and paste them, and you're done. I mean, that's all you ever have to do. It's really that simple. But uh, let me go ahead and throw a switch down, and just for example purposes, let's go ahead and uh, make these grow. And again, you're going to probably have a glass barrier right here or something, so let's go ahead and put this here. Because if not, um, if you don't have any barrier at all, the reed's going to probably fly a little bit further than you intended it to. So let's go ahead and make this fully glass. Oh, and if you want to use my design where you use, like, signs, you don't actually have to use signs. You can use, like, ladders or, well, I'm not sure if you can put ladders on glass. But um, I prefer signs because you can pretty much stick them to anything, including other signs. Plus, um, other things have collisions, so they might get stuck on top of it, which is why, like I said, I generally prefer signs. They're a little bit more of a hassle to use, but uh, generally less problems. Anyway, go ahead and flip the switch. They pop out, and bam, you have everything perfectly collected. You can even have, instead of um, having this filled with water, if you just wanted to make it one tier, let me go ahead and uh, get rid of all this water, you could have it instead streaming. I think I need to turn the sound down, I'm not quite sure. But anyway, uh, you could have it streaming this way. So basically, whenever it pops off, not only is it watering all your reeds, but it also throws... Uh, conveys it all to a general location. So instead of having that complicated design, you could have a single tier going like up a wall or something and have it all come to you like that. Uh, there's multiple designs you can use for this. I didn't want to make them all, but I think you get the gist of it. Anyway, now for the hard part is the elevator design. Um, the one problem with this is you are going to have some wires that stick out, so what you could do instead is you could make kind of like a, um, a hub like a uh, control hub above it. Uh, you know, kind of hide it with like a wall or something. Um, you can actually build a wall from like right here and you still have all the eff uh, effectiveness without having like all the stuff showing. But anyway, let's go ahead and show you the basic design of how this works. Uh, I'm going to have to remove some of these dirt blocks, but some of these 
Okay, that one was necessary. Uh, some of these are completely necessary. Throw this down, and I can't remember. Did that one have? Hmm. Actually, let me let me check real quick. I need to make sure these timings are correct because I need to check it later. Anyway, um, basically you have the um, the redstone coming through here. You have it. Basically, what the what this does is. Okay, I'm I'm gonna have to do kind of a mock-up example. Um, first of all, let's teach you a little bit about redstone repeaters. These are the single greatest redstone mechanic implemented ever to the game. Simply because not only are do they make immense complex circuitry so much smaller and easier to build, but it also does some amazing things. And of course you can make just redstone connect to it easily. But also, the cool thing about it is with redstone repeaters, it actually sends a current through things. Not only can you do things like power redstone torch with it, because it powers this block, but it also sends power to the next block. Basically, it powers this entire block, which allows the block to receive signals on the other side of it. Even other things like redstone and other torches, as shown there, can be powered by a redstone torch hitting that. Again, it, it's slightly different, I think, from regular redstone. As you can see, the power is going to the block, but it's only powering the things connected to the block, not uh, anything coming from it. So, repeaters, I'm not sure if this is a glitch or not, or intended, I'm not sure. Whatever it is, I hope it's not fixed, because if, if so, it would kind of screw up my elevator. But that's beside the point. Um, let me basically show you how this affects the elevator system. Uh, to make this more compact, uh, I used a series of kind of tricks to get it to work. Let me go ahead and show you here. Thing going up. Uh, the cool thing about um, pistons is they're really sensitive to currents. Like any block next to it that's even had, even remotely powered, it gets powered on. Therefore, whenever we add power to the block next to it, or wait, we actually have to have a current hitting it not just next to it, it um, powers on. Now let me show you how pist how um, repeaters come into play. First of all, let's actually get a lever so I don't have to keep breaking that. You turn it on, and it turns it on. Now, you're wondering how can we use it for that? Basically, what you do for this is you put a redstone repeater on, this, uh, on the next side, and what this does is not only does it power your piston, but you can loop this around to power the next piston. That way, it solves the timing issue because you don't want like tons of repeaters just to make something timed properly. What this does is it sends it through the same timer as the bottom one, and sends it through an additional timer for the top one, allowing you to pretty much keep the same current and the time, or timing, of the one before it. So let me uh, let me show you basically how to build this. It's really quite simple. Um, from the beginning one, you go through. Then you have your connecting one, which uh, gets the power through it. Again, I don't think you need this repeater. You could probably put just redstone, but I just put a repeater just to make things make life easier. Um, you can try it with regular redstone, but you definitely need the repeater on this side uh, to push the current through. So let's go ahead and show you how this works real quick. Uh, you put another piston here, and you can go ahead and do this one. And what you do is you take this redstone and loop it around. Now this one's going to be, need to be timed, so what I did is I put it all the way in the max time. Then on this side, I just put uh, a one-timer for it, and kind of continue up. Uh, the problem with this, though, is even though it's uh, really, really, uh, what is it, compact, it does have some problems like, um, let me show you for an example, like you had the redstone wiring coming here. Uh, it connects to this one, so it kind of bypasses the timer. So what you have to do is you have to use dirt or any other block to block it from connecting to the other ones. So it kind of has, has its own uh, separate thing. You kind of have to do the same for this side, because when this one comes through, it's going to try to connect to that one as well. But let's go ahead and show you the example real quick really small example. You flip the switch and it uh, kind of uh, goes up like that. Um, 
there's one thing you might be wondering, like if you just looked. Um, actually, I realized why those aren't timed properly. Um, if you look, the last two go off at the same time. I'll go ahead and explain that. That's not a glitch at all. What happens is, um, when this one goes through here, it powers this one. Uh, but when it goes through this one, this block, it powers both adjacent pistons, including the top one and the bottom one. But since the bottom one's already been powered, you don't really have to worry about it. Um, so basically, it, it powers in uh, sequence going up, but when it goes off, it goes off in duplicates, pretty much. It's a it's little bit difficult, and I really don't expect many people to understand it. It's just um, redstone mechanics, I guess. But um, anyway, let's go ahead and show you how to do the top one, now that we've done the bottom one. It's pretty easy to do. Um, you can put another piston here, and then even one in the ground. But uh, since we already have this one going up, I'll uh, basically show you how this is done. Uh, this is going to probably be where your water flows onto the piston. So we're going to have to make sure this is blocked off properly. You don't want any of the water flowing into uh, the wiring. If not, you're going to have some major problems. Anyway, make this a little bit bigger. And basically, this is going to be really simple. Is um, It's going to be the same design as the bottom one, just slightly different. Then we go ahead and come up here. And we put the water here, and as you can see, it pushes it directly onto the piston. That way, whenever you throw an item in, you can see the items go directly on top of the piston right there. So when it pushes up, it uh, it's fully on the piston. Anyway, now we have to have the up piston, the one that, uh, well, yeah, it, it's kind of like a staircase effect. You have the one pushing it up, then you have the one pushing it over to the next one so it can push it up. So basically... You just kind of uh, do this. Wait, wait, wait. Um, actually, I need one for there, too. My mistake. You need to have one for the bottom piston as well. I always uh, forget the bottom piston. So, uh, note to you guys, uh, don't forget the bottom piston. I remember uh, the first time I remade this, uh, the duplicate... The, the dupr duplicated one? Uh, duplicate whatever. Um, I forgot to wire the bottom one, the one under the water, <laughs> so uh, it wouldn't work properly. But uh, you don't want to hear me ramble on about that. Let's go ahead and show you how to make this one. It uses the same basic principle using the dirt to power it. Um, let's go ahead and do this. Kind of make uh, two by one wings on the side directly under the dirt block. So let's see. Uh, the first one is going to be right there. So I'm going to need kind of a staircase going up it. Again, I made this way too high by mistake, so you can probably adjust it later um, or make it go down. Uh, instead of starting this one off at 1, you're going to want to start off at 4. That way it's a uh, slightly different time because you don't want them both going off at the same time or that's not going to work at all. Um, again, you pretty much just repeat the same process of using the repeater uh, and redstone effect. I think you always put it like, yeah, for this one you always put it, what's the difference? Hmm. Oh, well, it doesn't matter as long as it's, um, it gets power right before it. Anyway, I'm going to be posting this uh, save file so you can look at my working version for yourself, because I might have messed up in explaining something along the way. Because, uh, after all, I just built this the other day. So, okay, let's see. All we have to do is block this one off. Okay, let's make sure this works. Uh, if you're not sure it works, because sometimes it's picky, like when it wants to work. Like, it, like I said, the items get caught in the pistons, which I think is just a, a glitch on Notch's part, sadly, or the Minecraft team. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, I just broke. I don't need that one there anyway. Um, okay, let's see. Just making sure I didn't break any essential dirt blocks. Okay, now let's turn it on. 
Yeah, I forgot to time the very top one. Whoops. There we go. Should work properly now. Again, you, you got to make sure all the time is perfectly set. It's really easy. It's not like you're using uh, fractions or anything. It's just basically uh, 1 and then 4, 1, 4, 1, 4, going all the way. Um, but let's go ahead and try this one more time just to make sure it does work. I already placed that? I guess so. Okay. Let's try this one more time. As you can see, it works perfectly fine. Um, it gets slightly... I mean, it's, it's pretty much the same thing. You can just copy this and continue all the way up. It, like I said, it's really, really simple to do. Uh, the wa figuring out how to do it, that was that was the real problem. But anyway, uh, that's about it for this tutorial. I think I showed you all that you need. Uh, I also did this in my texture test world, which I need to update my other test worlds as well. I've been forgetting to. But anyway, I hope this tutorial helped you all and showed you a couple of neat things. I'm going to probably be implementing something like this into my own Let's Play world, so you can look forward to that. I hope you all like it, and I'll see you guys next time.